Hi my lovely subscribers, how are you? I hope you guys are all doing amazing. This week on the tea, we're doing something a little bit different. As you know, we just concluded a 10 week countdown of the 10 trends that I think will uh, We'll really start to see a lot of as we uh, come out of lockdown and leave the pandemic behind us. Um, and let me tell you, uh, I had the best and the worst time, um, you know, pulling those trends together for you. I hope you all enjoyed what I came up with every week. Um, that said, that kind of brings me to what we'll be doing this week. And this week, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the process, my process, uh, when it came to um, uh, pulling uh, the 10 trends together and sharing it with you guys. So the whole idea uh, of counting down uh, 10 pandemic trends came um, really out of an effort to become more consistent on my social media to post a little bit more and to get excited about posting on my social media so i wrote that down on my to-do list as something that i really needed to think of or come up with a system to help me do that and um lo and behold this idea i had and actually it throws back to last summer when i did the the vogue challenge cover and top 10 post pandemic trends was one of the headlines i had put at the time it was a bit of a you know a joke a placeholder i didn't really plan on doing this or didn't even think i would be doing something like this so it's a bit funny that you know a year later here i am actually sort of <laughs> putting this into practice and um you know I've, I've done it 10 weeks in and you know we have the trends and i'm so excited i'm so happy uh with kind of what came out of the entire process so uh, yeah, in wanting to be a little bit more consistent on social media, I came up with this uh, with this thing uh, that I wanted to do. And uh, in terms of process, I would say that this was a, a quite a spontaneous, fluid process. I didn't really spend a lot of time uh, trying to outline how I was going to tackle this, how I would find the trends or what to read up on. I really wanted it to be something uh, organic, something intuitive. Again, the idea was to improve my inconsistency uh, of posting on social media. And I didn't want to sort of engage in any activity that would stress me out or put undue sort of pressure on me and make me want to stop. So I wanted something that was natural, that was enjoyable, something that I had a vested interest in and would sort of consistently be able to keep up with. Uh, so this idea I thought was great. First of all, uh, a few reasons why it was great. Um, uh, it had a, a very specific subject matter, so I knew exactly what I had to do every week. Every week I had to pick one trend and I had to talk about it. And it was, uh, in addition to being specific, it was also quite you know broad and quite vague as well because I didn't give myself any parameters for how I would talk about these trends, what the trends had to be, what style I would use, I kind of left that all open to leave my, you know, to have my creative juices flowing a little bit to put, take any pressure out of it. Uh, if you saw, you know, as, as we went on several weeks, uh, different weeks started to look like uh, different things. So it really allowed my uh, my creativity to to flow, leaving it both specific as well as broad, if it makes sense to you. Uh, a second thing that really uh, worked for me in terms of you know being able to stay consistent was uh, announcing it, broadcasting it, putting up on my social media that this was something that I was going to be doing. Uh, and that's one thing, and I don't know how it works for all of you, and you know there might be some of you who can relate to this, but um, you know it's so easy to fall off, you know, a promise or something that you've made to you know uh, yourself if nobody else knows about it. If you've made a commitment to yourself, I'm going to start eating healthy, I'm going to start working out if you haven't told anybody else then it's easy for you to just you know talk yourself out of it um, so by putting it out in public and telling social media <laughs> that I was doing this it kind of put a, a good kind of stress or a good kind of pressure on me to make sure that I was actually delivering and that I would be able to keep up and be consistent because now uh, at least in my mind there were people who knew that I was doing this and who would probably expect to see that I continue doing it and wanting to be a woman of my word <laughs> Um, it really helped to, <clears throat> to, you know, boost me up a little bit and keep me going. Um, so yes, going back to, uh, choosing the trends, I didn't really spend a lot of time, uh, researching and mapping out the 10 trends ahead of time. I really wanted this to be something that came to me naturally. So every week 
uh, believe it or not sometimes up until saturday or the friday because we know that the tea comes out every sunday up until the friday i had no idea what the trend was going to be and i was kind of still waiting for that inspiration um so how i got inspiration would be just in my everyday life really i would um you know go about my everyday uh during the week so uh, observing uh, what people were wearing or uh, if I was running out running errands, um, scrolling through various feeds, reading various articles. And usually it happened that uh, there would be a specific sort of trend or something that would catch my eye that week and, and something that would spark an interest in me and something that would make me want to, uh, you know, uh, pick that topic and explore it a little bit deeper. So that's kind of how all the trends um, came about. They were really quite spontaneous picks uh, and once I, 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 I thought that this was a possible trend either because I kept seeing it or stood out in my mind that week as something that maybe needed a little bit of exploration I would then go online to look uh, if it was actually trending because I would you know maybe google animal print what is happening with the animal print uh, trend in 2021 and lo and behold surprisingly I would find that a lot of these items that you know I had intuitively intuitively picked up as something that would be trending would actually be you know topics that other blogs and other people would be talking about you know confirming sort of my little my little um, hunch that this was something that that was actually that was actually prevalent in society and that people were excited to be uh, to be engaging in so that's how every topic um, you know, I picked every topic and yes, you know, I can't say that it was a little bit stressful because, you know, the idea didn't hit me at the same time every week. So I didn't have uh, a process set up where, uh, I could, uh, for example, do photography on, um, the Monday or the Tuesday and then write the blog uh, on the Wednesday. So I didn't have a system. I just had to sort of trust that the inspiration would come, that the right trend would come to me and that I would get it in time to think about it, take photos for it, write about it and share it with you guys. And I did it 10 weeks in a row, that exact same uh, sort of approach and every time it came through. So I gotta tell you that when you have a little faith, first of all, that you know, in yourself and that you will always find a way to deliver it comes through and also just you know feeling supported in that way thinking you know what this is something that i've committed to this is something that i know that i have to put out every sunday come rain come shine something will go out so i always sort of took peace and relax in the, in the knowing that whatever happened something would go out and it didn't matter that that you know that spark of inspiration came on friday and not on the monday and sometimes it came earlier and sometimes it didn't so yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting process to kind of trust myself in that way and let go and uh, have things flow nicely the way that they did. So once I knew what trend I would be talking about that week, obviously um, I would have to uh, get the different elements uh, together in order to be able to write about it and you know come up with my little four pager, usually four pager that I would present as you know uh, the reason for the trend or my belief in why I think this this subject you know would be trending. Um, so yeah. So the one thing I've also noticed about my process as I kind of engaged with it for the weeks uh, that came up for the diff for the 10 week period was that um, I was always first inspired by the imagery or the photography. So I needed, uh, first of all, the spark, you know, the creative idea of what trend that I thought I would be talking about for that week. But then also uh, I had to uh, take some photos first. And so choosing the outfit for the week, uh, most of the outfits I already had in my closet, this was something that I wanted to do without um, really uh, spending any money or feeling like I had to buy more I feel like you know we already buy too much as it is as you know consumers or wardrobes are stuffed with clothing that we're not wearing so I wanted to sort of uh, pull these trends all from my existing closet now I will say there are some pieces that I did end up getting um, but most of it I already owned so once I had the idea of the trend I would go into my closet and like look around in there and see okay well how can I represent this in my my clothing or the style um, so I would then pick an outfit and obviously would go off and shoot some photos either with a friend or by myself uh, it varied depending on the week 
and that I found was the most crucial part because as I was taking the photos as I sort of and I didn't always have in mind um, what kind of pose or what kind of environment I wanted to be in uh, some of these things would happen again spontaneously when uh, I would sort of uh, like a background would catch my eye or maybe uh, I'd see a model or something and that what she how she was posing or something would catch my eye but I didn't always have um, a set idea of how I wanted to structure the trend. So I would go out dressed in my little outfit, um, you know, ready to take photos. And again, you just, with, you know, uh, if you if you take photography yourself, you know that you can you can never be a hundred percent certain of the results you get. Sometimes you have good days, sometimes you don't. Uh, but I would go out and just really, you know, immerse myself in the process and take as many photos as I can from as many angles and different poses and then come home and look through the photos now I think that's when the magic started to happen was when I was looking through the photos trying to you know pick which ones I would uh, post as the as the storyline on my Instagram as well as which ones I would feature um, in the in the tea that I would share with everybody so as I was looking through the photos trying to sort them out the good from the bad you know what do I really like about this that's kind of where I think the magic happened because I would then then pick my top three or my top five photos and then I would stare at those photos and look at them and think okay well what about these photos do I like what is the message you know what's the expression saying uh, what's really the message here uh, what's the emotion being conveyed by the by the photograph and it was from there that ideas would start flowing for what the trend should be about so the photos always had to come first and I was I took the most time sort of taking them and as soon as I took photos and I came home and picked a top three I would know that I was set and that I could release <laughs> release uh, a trend that Sunday no matter what because yes the writing part was strenuous as well uh, but I found that, you know, once I knew what I wanted to talk about, that I could sit down and hammer out, you know, uh, something within uh, a couple of hours, even if it was on the Sunday that I was writing. And I usually did end up doing my writing on the Sunday. Um, but yeah, I found that once I had the right photos uh, and, you know, I had the sense of the emotion or the message that I wanted to say, then writing was actually um, uh, quite straightforward. So once I had my photos um, and sort of a, a general idea of what I wanted to write about when it came to the trend, I would go into my number one app that I use for all of this, the Canva app. Um, I love graphic design, but I am not a graphic design artist yet. I haven't really sort of mastered Illustrator or Photoshop just yet, but I will soon. Um, so Canva has really been a lifesaver in this because it allows some of us who are, you know, designers at heart, designers in our mind, have that creative vision. Uh, it really does sort of act as that tool that allows you, you know, to bring these ideas to life. So number one fan of Canva, I would say. Uh, if you are beginning off in design or anything like that. So once I had my photos uh, and sort of a brief idea of what I wanted to talk about, I would then pop into Canva and just start playing around with uh, layouts and start playing around with, you know, backgrounds and ways of positioning the photos. And I would say that that necessarily came second. Uh, I couldn't write a single word until the design was right because again it's all about for me anyways it was about the visual and what message that visual was sending out so once I had my um, self portraits taken and a good layout for the for the four pages in terms of background choice um, I think I remain consistent on my font and all of other that but you know a general theme uh, would start to come through about the trend so once I laid that out I could finally sit down and write about the trend so and that was the last thing I did so yeah I mean that was basically it and that's kind of the same process that I replicated across the board for all 10 trends and um, you know I, I, as the as the weeks went by I definitely became more confident in my ability to one spot the trend without any stress and then two to be able to take the right photos and then send the right message to anybody who was subscribed to me and be interested in reading about my thoughts on the trend so that's really it and that's kind of all I wanted to share with you guys when it comes to my process or the process around um, producing the 10 post-pandemic trends that you should definitely 
definitely be following um, now that we are coming out of lockdown and you know embracing the world again. Um, but that's kind of how it all came together. And I'm so, you know, I'm just, uh, at the end of it, I literally gave myself a pat on the back. I said, oh my God, good job. You did it. 10 weeks, 10 trends. You were able to do it. And of course, I would not have done any of this or even finished it if it wasn't for the people who are subscribed to the tea. Uh, and in particular, the very first subscriber, I will name who you are soon and give you a little uh, gift from the Pink Majestic line once that's fully launched. But um, yeah, after the very first trend, which I believe was the skirt, uh, I wrote about that, sent it out. I didn't have any subscribers then, I don't think. I just had, uh, you know, I just put it out and started like, you know, talking about it on my Instagram. And then the following week, the second trend, the bucket hat trend, that's when my mind started to play some tricks on me. Um, I started to think, well, if nobody's reading this, should I really even bother? Um, you know, it's already Sunday and I don't already haven't written anything. Maybe I, sh I shouldn't even be doing this. Uh, this is really time consuming if nobody's reading it. You know, just trying to just psyche myself out and not really trying to talk myself out again out of being consistent. Uh, and then I went into um, my website just to, I, I think I was just uh, looking around because I made, a, uh, I guess, a promise to myself not to really look at, you know, who was subscribed and not base my, you know, whether or not I continued or not on, you know, the number of subscribers. But I accidentally kind of saw that there was one person subscribed, one. And then that changed the whole game because now I had somebody who was waiting for me to release this. And so I had to. And so I would like to thank everybody who sort of stayed subscribed and um, has, you know, followed me on this journey, 10 week journey. And I really would not have kept it up, you know, if it wasn't for any of you guys. So that's really exciting. And I can't wait to, I guess, see who else subscribed and where we go with this. I've ended the, the series. I'm not sure what's next yet. Um, I'm thinking I'll go back to that Vogue cover that I did, that challenge, this was last summer, and see what other random headlines I came up with then, and then maybe write articles about those. So uh, that's an idea I'm considering, but uh, we'll definitely keep this going. It's so exciting to do. I have so much fun uh, every time. It is, uh, you know, the best and sometimes the worst experience, but uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Hope you guys as well. So, you know, stay with me and let's see where this goes, okay? Uh, I think I've rambled enough. That is everything. If you relate to my process at all or understand a little bit where I'm coming from when it comes to this, you know, random structured but not so structured process and intuitive and I'm just going to wait for the ideas to drop from the heavens approach. <laughs> let me know i know i feel a little cuckoo sometimes but it's worked and um yeah that's kind of how i have been able to to move through this so yeah until the next time uh uh yeah i hope you enjoyed this video got a little bit of something from it uh we'll be in touch on the tea and i will talk to you guys later okay Mwah. love you